year. You and I are both in real estate, right? Lola, yeah. when are we going to stop our whole business and be oh, like, oh, can't sell any more homes, Mercury? I block it out. I right. block it out. Like, it's going to be fine. It's going to go through. Yeah. Even though it's Mercury retrograde, you know? Yeah, I just, I just am more cautious. Now, I will notice, I will say, like, my deals get all shambled. Like, there's way yes. more. Little complications. Come yeah. On. Just, or like it's a trickier situation or a trickier, trickier. loan or something yes. kind of through at the end. Yeah. Big time, for sure. But regardless, I don't think it ends up being like treacherous, you know. No. No. At all. No. Now, Venus retrograde, another beast. This, this, I don't like Venus retrograde. Well, it's over, right? Yeah. Yeah, but it's always very hard. Like every, it, Venus retrogrades have been the hardest times for me. What about you, Dipti? Uh, so the other day I, I disagreed with you, but today when I look back, I think I kind of agree. So yeah, Venus retrograde, but in a lot of people that we've met in the past, that's what happened with me. Because maybe I'm running through Venus Mahadasha and Jupiter Andalusha. So uh, I met a lot of people from past. So it resolved some matters, but it resolved them for me in my head, you know? Me? Not that really on the outer level. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't that great. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. But ever since ever since Saturn came in my first house, and since Saturn has left from the first house, I don't really think nothing is bothering me as much as it was bothering me I when agree. it was in the first house. So I'm not really able to judge Venus retrograde in the bad light because there was so much it was so heavy when Saturn was in the first house oh, that man. it was really heavy. So everything else seems like a blessing, even if it is a little bad. You know? I agree. <laughs> See, and you know, there's parts I've felt like Saturn retrograde was better than when it was not retrograde. Oh, yes, for sure. Right? I'm feeling so good ever since Saturn went, went retrograde. I lo like Saturn can retrograde all day long for me. I mean, that's like, I'm, I'm just, ex when he's retrograde, I'm, Doing backflips. I feel like I get smarter or something. <laughs> yeah, it just, you know, I got some returns, some income tax returns, which I was not expecting. Because Saturn was going through the second house, I got some money from the government, you see? So when well, Saturn you know what else I've always noticed too? I've like mapped it down to the, the, the months that I always make more money. And it's February and it's September. Wow. And it's yeah, September. almost the same for me, September. Yeah. yeah. September for sure. My three best months. Mm -hmm. Weird. And I don't know why, but I don't know. That's just how it's always been. That's when like I've sold the most homes, when I've closed the most deals. I tend to be, I will say, I, March for me ends up being hell, always. I, March is like the worst month for me for some reason. Wow. You feel that way? No, March is March is one of my best. Interesting. Yeah. What Mahadasha are you running, Lola? You know, I'm in my Ram Mahadasha K2 Mukti. Whoa, and Rahu is in your oh, it's in Taurus, Rahu and Ketu. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's why I definitely think she'll be married in this Rahu Dasha because it's in the seventh house. Yeah. When I, I'm hitting Rahu Venus, February 2018. So funny, Lola, you and I both have Rahu and Kritika in the seventh and it's like within three degrees. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So I'm excited. You know, I just, I'm like, okay, it's cool. You know? <laughs> so in a way, Lola, you're running through your Venus Mahadasha. In a way, because Rahu in Taurus makes it act like Venus. <gasps> you know what that? Interesting. Yeah. All of us are running through Venus in some or the other way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, and that's a good house for you, Alice. Like right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is why she's in. Uh, okay. That's her 12th house also activated. What'd you say? Uh, that's, that activates her 12th house as well. Yep. Another house for Venus. 
Wow. That's in, since she's in this, I that's like I keep saying that, but because you're in a different country from your birth, it just works out so nicely for you. I do yeah. believe all of your success is from that your twelfth house is like foreign lands, foreign business. I think if I moved to India, my life would end would improve too. You know, <laughs> also, foreign see, uh, she's into yeah land business, right? Which is fourth house, and mm. Saturn is sitting in her twelfth house, right? With the Mahadasha, no. Yeah, so that that's also a good combination to do, you know, to basically deal into a state. Foreign, foreign, foreign country. Foreign country, foreign country. yeah. Because yep. fourth house is the house of real estate. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's so amazing. It's so amazing how it's all written. Our whole lives are written in charts. Yeah. And I don't know, Dipti, if you heard me say this, but like we, Lola and I got into real estate the exact same time. We, like everything was like so timed out to, it's just so strange. And even, and you and I have, I think you and I get hit with emotional things and physical things at the same time because our moons and ascendants and Mars, yep. you know, I mean, it's just like a, and our approach to things are a little different because maybe of our sun sign, your sun is exalted, it's in Leo. So you react maybe in a different fashion than I do. My sun is hemmed between Saturn, it's not really hemmed, but it's with the debilitated Venus and sun in Virgo. So maybe that's why I react to things in a different fashion. Where is Lola's sun? One second. Lola's uh, is in Swati. In Swati, wow. Can you double check on that? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. That's in the chart. It's in Swati. You got Sun and Swati, Libra, mm -hmm. and you've got Saturn in Vishaka, Mercury in Vishaka, and Pluto in Swati. Mm -hmm. I've got Saturn in Swati, Pluto in Swati. I've got Pluto and Jupiter in Swati. Actually, Jupiter in Swati. Oh. so weird. That's crazy. You know, Dipti, I can feel a lot of Virgo energy from you, and I love it. Really? <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, so, I feel nervous with this Virgo energy at times, you know? It's a little too overpowering. I like my Mars to rule and ride me. Yeah. But if that comes out nice, it's good. I like, I like how... Uh, uh, Heidi's Mars and Ketu, you know, react because her moon in Pisces makes her so compassionate. Very. Very compassionate, okay? And because of that compassion, at times, you know, it's important to detach and that's what her Ketu with Mars gives her. So she knows how to balance it. You know, that's what I like about you. I never that. I do too. Yeah. I, I will say th thanks, but I think that is one of my blessings. Like if I didn't have that to balance me out to, yeah. I don't know, like who knows where I would be. I mean, <laughs> you have to think about that. I always sit there and think like, I looked at my chart within at 11 and then if I was born at one, if I was born at three, and it's like so amazing how my chart would have changed. I look at it like, okay, if I was born at 11, I could have become like a stripper. No joke. It's because I had all this craziness in the... I'm not joking. It, like it's a conjunct Saturn and was in with Venus, and I was a Libra ascendant. It's weird. And then the other way, I had it split up. It was just like it's so crazy to see your chart different ways. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I kind of play around. Let's, Let's look at one chart at a time and just talk about it. What do you say? Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's easier too. Yeah. Can we start with Heidi's? Yeah. Let's start with Heidi. Let's start with Heidi. Oh. Well, let Heidi start. No. Okay. Shoot. Okay, this isn't going to work. Should it be... Um, let's just go to... I know what we're going to do. Sorry, guys. I got lots of screens going on. Sure, you want to start with mine? Okay, go ahead. I'll let you guys give me a little reading. Why don't we do that? That would be so nice. Yeah. Um, 
funny. <laughs> oh, shoot. I wish we could get it. Like, I hate when it's long ways. Ah, uh, there we go. So Jupiter in the second house, Heidi. Yes. Um, in your ho house of money and family. Um, there's always optimism and a lot of energy in, in this house. Is that right? Growing up, your your family was a big influence in your life, and yeah, um, I, you know, as bad as I like, always my parents always like I I was lucky. Like they always had, I always had everything basically I wanted. You know, I I was more externally screwed up from other people. You know, just. That's from, from others. I was actually, my parents, like, I stopped paying my cell phone bill when I got a real job. I mean, I was really, really fortunate. And my family has always been there for me financially, if anything ever happened. But, you know, I, I mean, so I just, but I had like to live a certain lifestyle and I knew you weren't going to do it forever. So I had to, I knew I was going to be the same way, you know, and I'll, I always figure it out. It's like, I'm a survivor. I just figure out whatever, you know? Exactly. I mean, that that's indicative. You will always uh, prosper, you know, in your business. And that's a blessing to have Jupiter in the second house. Sagittarius. Yeah. Wonderful. And you know what, I can see that very clearly. Like, even if I didn't see your chart, and I talk to you, it's how supportive you are and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I try. <laughs> I mean, I do, but, but it, even when it's like my, when my, when it's bad for me financially, somehow I always pull through yeah. it. And so that's, that's like that Jupiter. I think personally, I think that's that it, but I, you know what I will say, I think Neptune in, makes money. I'm a spend, like I was always a spender. I just didn't care about money. You know, right. when I had it, I would pay for everybody else. Right. Because they also say that when you have Jupiter in the, whichever house you have Jupiter in, Jupiter spends that house. Yeah. If it's in the 10th house, it spends it, you know? Yeah. Make depend on it because Jupiter is uh, also money or gold, you know? Yeah. And wherever it is, Jupiter likes to give. So it gives from that house. So which is why she is a spendthrift. Oh, that's that's a good analogy, Dipti. Yeah. All right. What else? My moon and brevity. I think that's why I'm obsessed with astrology. Whoa. Wow. Yes. Your your moon and brevity. That's that's actually where you get your compassion from, and yeah. also you like to escape. I think because you like to escape, you escape into your Scorpio astrology. Well, and I like being by the water. Like I live on the water, you know. I don't really get in the water because I don't get in the water with it's dirty. But and you know that's another thing I've noticed about Revati Nikshatra. Like there's another protection there. Like there, when you have your moon in Revati, you're you do have like this lucky protection thing where it never gets that bad. Even when you think your life's hell, I just turn the news on. And I look at the other countries and I say, my life's not that bad. Right yeah. on. That's, that's what I do because, and then it goes away. It's like, as long as I, yeah. But I think like I would be way more. So, I mean, that's good for, I guess, who knows? They say astrology is the fifth house too. Big I think also it's because Bhavan Bhavam from the ninth house. Mm -hmm. And ninth house is a house of travel. And Revti's Lord is called the protector of those who travel. I, I can't recall his name in oh. Hindi, but True. that's what it means. And that is why when you travel, it kind, it kind of awakens you, yeah. looks after you, something like that. So I always say, does that mean you and I could like go to Syria right now and nothing would be happen would happen to us? Okay, you know? yeah. that's, there'll be more people who would, huh, nothing would happen to us. So with your Rahu in Taurus, I would still be fine with it. But with my Rahu in Gemini. In Ardra. Yeah, in Ardra. Could land us in danger. So yeah, you know? true. Very <laughs> true. 
Yeah, our raw hosts are, are set up aren't set up nicely that way. But you gotta think, like if you go by just the nakshatras, then I don't know. Could yeah. Be. Uh another thing that's really nice about you, um, having the Sun Mercury conjunction in Leo. Yeah. That's huge. That's like you're you're able to really shine with your words. Um, and just a really quick silver tongue and mind, um, very sharp. Um, and you know, it's, that's why I love listening to you. I mean, you really captured me, you know, right away instantaneously. Yeah. But some people think, you know, some, it's either you like me or you don't. And I think personally. You know, it's one of those. It's not like, oh, everybody just likes her. She's got this such nice, sweet voice. It's like the real like me. Usually the people that are have the deeper energy tend to, you know. But, I mean, that's fine. I have a lot of enemies, too. Let's be, I'll be honest. Like, a lot of people who don't like me. It's so because you have sun six places away from moon, it kind of gives you the ability to deal with your enemies. Yes. That's, oh, yeah, they always become my friends. I work my enemies, for sure. They yeah. always become your friends, maybe because you have 11th Lord in the 10th house. Mm. Yeah. Mercury. Yep. So they, yeah, they become your friends and sometimes maybe you work with them. I think my worst problem in the 10th, and another thing I'm noticing is the 9th house is something that I'm really looking at as the father and looking at the significant, okay, because we all learn astrology. So, you know, because every reading I've had, people have said, your dad must be in the government, right? Because, or your dad must be in the government or, a, or law enforcement, okay? And I ne that never added up. But then if you look at the ninth house, or you look what my father is, like, in my chart as the significator, that's yeah. my dad, right? You see, so it's not the, you can't just look at it as the 10th house. Because exactly. my dad had excavation companies, you know, it's not like in businesses. He didn't have, he wasn't in law enforcement and wasn't into politics. So that's something um, I've noticed. Yeah. The Venus in your 10th house, it's one of the best placements for your career. Venus is in my 11th, debilitated. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well, but that's okay. It's not, I don't think that's that bad. Venus in my 11th really just, um, okay. I mean, the 11th house, I think, is like your gate, what you wish, what your great wishes, what you want, what you hope for, right? Yeah. I just don't have unrealistic expectations. You know, I, I think that's really what it does. And I'll tell you, I think debilitated Venus has brought money into me easily, too. So that has it happened. It makes you more practical. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. For sure. Twelfth house in the Saturn in the twelfth, for sure, hands down. I know. Got divorced. Debt went up, expenses, you know, all that stuff. That I don't sleep. I mean, the twelfth house is there. Um, but you know what, Heidi, what's the best thing about your twelfth house is even though you have Saturn in your twelfth house, it keeps you focused. That's what I feel. Because yeah. your Jupiter makes you a lot optimistic. Your sun gives you a lot of confidence. Your Mercury wants you to escape and become optimistic, optimistic and dreamy about everything. But I think a lot of credit should go to your Saturn in the 12th house. That it keeps you active. It keeps you on your toes, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, that Rahu in the 7th house can take you somewhere else. But it's your Saturn, I think, is what the saving grace is in the chart. I mean, because there are so many other good things happening, you can yeah. get, you know, behind. But it's your Saturn which is exalted that keeps you going. What do you think of that, Lola? Well, you know, um, the Saturn being in the 12th house, it's, that's where your desire and need for isolation comes from. Right, Dipti? Yeah. Heidi, do you agree with that? What did you say? You broke up. Saturn being in your 12th house, that's where your desire for your space and isolation comes from. Oh, you know? yeah. right. Actually, I have Saturn in my 12th too. <laughs> right. It's definitely where 
Yeah. And that's why I like to secretly dance. <laughs> Swati is a dancer. A lot of Swatis um, and a lot of Chitras come out of are dancers. Yes. Yes. Pasta's hand. Like, I've, I've, I've got, like, these nakshatras. They've been my saving grace, you know? Because if you don't know what time somebody's born, or you just, you really can skip a lot of steps with the nakshatras I've learned. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and also Swati is good for real estate. It's good for, and you know, when you work for, and you know what got activated? Me doing the mortgage business in the 11th house. Oh. With, um, when I was, when I do, I do mortgages now. So that one got activated for sure. Yeah. All my oh. bosses are Leos, always. What? All my bosses and managers have been Leos. Wow. Also, I believe, Heidi, you got intensely, you know, intensively in your business after Jupiter and Rahu entered Leo. Am I right? Yes, for sure. That was kind of chaotic. <laughs> but, uh, that was a little in insane. It, it got a little bit better. I'm really excited for Rahu to get out of my 10th house. It's really mm -hmm. excited. Yeah. Rahu doesn't work well with me, I don't think. K2 works very well with me. Rahu is my, is not my friend. <laughs> I think, seriously, I, I have learned, I really believe that. Rahu causes problems. I think it must have done some good to you because Rahu is six places away from your moon. I mean, maybe it does, but personally, like sta stability wise, Rahu throws me for, yeah, it gives, like, I'll say this. I met Joni, she was at my house. When I had sun on my natal sun and Rahu was there and Mercury was there, it was like crazy how when Joni wow. ended up coming to my house, like her sun was exact on my sun. Um, so yeah, the, Rahu has definitely brought in some uh, more opportunities. Yeah, and if you think about it, and downs is what you mean to say. Yeah. yeah. Same yeah. with me. It, it, it's almost the same way with, me, with my career as well. Yeah, totally. it gives you opportunities, but it gives you opportunities with it craziness. Like, a bit of price, a bit of price. It takes something yeah. away. So with the price. price. With the yeah. price. Yeah. I think, sure. I think this is what Joni said once in one of her videos that Rahu gives, but he gives with the price. It's so yes. true. Yeah. So it's never like a complete, like, ecstatic, perfect. Well, because that's how they are. There's something yeah. lacking. There's something. Yeah. yeah. Because maybe it's how they feel. So finally, you would only be able to give something to the extent that you feel about it. Right. And that's what most to Rahu. Because he himself within himself is not really feeling complete about being Rahu. So. Yeah. And then that. when he's single, when Rahu's single and I'm not dating anybody, he likes to take over other things. <laughs> he's like, what do you, what do you mean? We're not going to, we're not going to find somebody. All right. I'll just cause some chaos in this house. And then in this house, and then in this house. <laughs> that's what I think. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's go on to somebody else. I will say my Saturn exalted in the 12th really makes me one more thing deal and really respect foreign people, foreign countries, elders. Like I've always been very respectful. And I've always been obsessed with other cultures. Wish I did. Yeah. Wish I lived. I like think. I still, in, in some weird way, think I'm from India. Like I'm. I think I'm just as Indian as you are. Like I'm not joking, and I know I'm not. But like I still like to pretend. So I think that's what it's done to me. <laughs> Whoa. All right. So let's go to who's next? Pick. Who? Lola. Oh boy. Oh boy. You know what's weird? Your birthday is 10.30 and 50s is 10.03. 11.02. Yeah. 11 wow. Wow. Wait a second. Do I have your, does that mean I have your birth date in here wrong? What do you oh, mean? Mine? Well, yeah, what's your birthday? 10 3. October 3rd. October 3rd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I was like, whoa. whoa. And, time is, and time is what? 11. Oh, you were mentioning my birthday. I thought you were mentioning about my time of birth. No, no, no. I just meant your birthday. Your, October. 
Okay, go, okay, go ahead. So, you know what's so crazy? All right, so you've obviously, the K2 Venus was the first thing that stuck out to me in JSTA. But I just think any planet, like I think K2 does well in Scorpio, so I don't, I don't think it's bad for you at all. Once again, I, I do believe that K2 and Scorpio just makes you try to find yourself a little, it takes a little longer to find out who you are, what you like, what you, I don't believe it like puts this curse and makes you a terrorist like some people say, right? Literally, people have said K2 and Mars together, you know, yes, can cause a terrorist. But I'm not a terrorist, let's be honest. <laughs> I'm about the furthest thing from a terrorist. So where, you know, when you have that K2 with Venus, it doesn't mean it's going to sabotage everything. It's just going to make something not be as, it's going to tone down that Venus, you know? I, that's what I think. Like, it's going to make it more logical. Like, it might, like, that K2 makes my Mars more logical, For not sure. so aggressive. So it makes your Venus more logical. I like to look at it like that. Right. Well, K2 is the planet of spirituality. Yes. And Uranus, you know, sudden upheavals definitely have experienced that. Um, with rebellious. The Were you guys all rebellious? Because I was. Always. Always. Well, I was. But you know what? I think all of us were rebels with a cause. Yeah. So it's sure. not like we're like trying to hurt people, break no. rules just right. to, for vanity or whatever. It's always I been guess. for a deeper, better cause. Agreed. And so you know what I've noticed? All, Swati and Chitra are all about the law, like following law and order. Yeah. So when you, you've got your son in Swati, you, if you've got your Jupiter in Swati, I have my Saturn in Swati, you know, we're all in, if you have your um, Saturn in, in Chitra, I think. So yeah. that's yes. all about like doing the right thing, the right, you know, it's, there's For no sure. like, no, it could, that's what I'm saying. We could have been turned, our nikshatras were a little off. It could have been a little bit different. And this is just right. shows how these, how these pan out. Another thing I think that's really interesting with the, K2 and Venus together is like, you know, Venus is luxury, shopping, you know, perfume, like just material goods, right? Yeah. And for me, like I literally go shopping twice a year, like for, for new clothes, for, so like the K2, K2 being a spiritual planet with the Venus, you know, I feel like I, I always want to detach myself from the Venus material, mm -hmm. you know, but it always finds me. Like, I'll go shopping that twice a year, and I'll find, like, things that I would dream in my head, like a dress that I love, or, you know, and it just naturally gravitates to me, like yeah. beautiful things, you know? So I thought that was really interesting with the venus and k2 because i don't seek those things out but it's like they naturally seek me out yeah yep for sure and you know mars and jupiter in the second you know makes you really good i in sagittarius and this that makes you a really good coach and a really good like helper and i know i think you said on the side that you like to help people like get their lives together and stuff that yeah. Mars, Jupiter in the second is like a Tony Robbins, in my opinion. In Kirvashada, for sure. Kirvashada is all about connecting with beauty and connecting with like the higher purpose and making and helping coach people to have a higher purpose, right? For sure. So I think sometimes like that right there, I mean, makes you a phenomenal, you know, speaker and being able to move people in a really powerful way because it's Mars and Jupiter together. And Neptune as well. I mean, Neptune can make, can create these illusions to people where people just follow you, you know, like, and just want to hear what you have to say. It's and I do believe that your third house is Capricorn once again, just because when you said that fight, because if you had the moon in the second with all that stuff right there, you'd be a spend, like, you'd be spending money left and right, right? Because Sagittarius doesn't care. Sagittarius is like, and then the K2 Mar, you know, that's another reason why I think this is possibly right. Yeah, my savings are very important to me because it makes me just feel very secure, you mm -hmm. know, 
when I know I have this much amount in the bank, I can feel freer and, you know, more open. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. The Jupiter Mars, you know, I, I thrive in personal development and coaching. You know, my real estate clients have become my, you know, clients, <laughs> like, like right. life coaching. And it's really nice. You know, I, I just like. That's I, your true gift, you know, yeah. and you're going to do that no matter what, whether how, like, you know, that's just going to be there. Just like you in astrology, mm -hmm. and Dipti, like for me, it's like helping people maximize their potential in all areas of life. Even health, because you, you know, you, that Jervashada is very like, I've noticed a lot of people that have planets and that are very healthy. Like they drink no GMO stuff. They're into like organic yeah. stuff. They're into all, yeah. they're into like that kind of stuff. I, I've been gluten free for five years. That's what, in that too. <laughs> that's Again, another thing. I've been eating all organic stuff. And you know what, Dipti, for you, that's that Hosta, all those Virgo planets. Yes. Virgo oh, stuff. yes. Mm -hmm. I'm so much into herbs and medicines. Yes. And You're all about that healing stuff, stuff too. And no, no sure. chemical medicines, no allopathy, just normal Ayurveda. It's you know, Dipti, I have not looked at your chart in so long, too. And then I looked at it. If I just. Yeah, we'll go there. We'll go there. Let's, let's, sorry. You're a healer. We're going to go back to that. Yeah, for just sure. Just like your dad. Anyway, so we're going to get back. <laughs> okay, so um, Moon in the Third, business mindset, competitive. You want to, you, you, that's in Capricorn, that's businesswoman right there. Sales. Business sales, phenomenal at it. Hard working. Hard work. Third, yeah, and the third Lord goes into the twelfth, and the, the and the ruler is that is Saturn, foreign lands. Boom. Business and foreign lands. Mm -hmm. Sales in foreign lands. Do you see that? That's also ten places away from the third house. Ten places away is what business in foreign lands. Yep. See, the third Lord goes into the twelfth, and the fourth Lord. The fourth Lord's real estate property. Yeah. And fourth Lord in the 12th will make you live in foreign lands. Wow. Go away from your homeland and Saturn. So once again, we're all back in this 12th house. Right. And the ruler of my first is in the second house of money. Yeah. That's good from, that's really money good. Money you make. Yeah. So, yeah. And almost being in like, and being in charge of like family. And I know you take care of your family a lot and that's very important and you're like kind of the dr driver there totally. and that's what you value the like you focus on that you have to because mars is there so when your first lord goes into the second house wherever the first lord you're going to focus on that like hands down boom that's going to be your thing so because it's jeshta nakshatra jeshta nakshatra jeshta means the eldest the one who takes care of everyone oh wow yeah yep I'm, I, uh, I feel self-neglectful. I yeah. do feel um, that because- You take care of others so much that you forget about yourself. Yeah. That's, 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 the thing. But that's what I thrive. I, I feel most alive when I'm making others happy. I you just, know that's a part of Capricorn too? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Capricorns can be, they, you won't know that necessarily about them because- they're not very emotional, but no, they thrive they on making other people succeed. And feel and they, thrive on, they don't talk big, they thrive on doing things. Yeah, and you'll notice a lot of people in like doctors and health field and stuff are a lot of, there are a lot of Capricorns and like some of the shady politicians are Capricorns, but some of the good ones are too. <laughs> so, because they really want to help people. Like they are there for a cause to serve, right, in a way. Yeah. Um, then Rahu in the seventh. Ups and downs and... Ups and downs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have that, Heidi. I know, right. You Ups and downs. downs. It's like everything could be going so smooth and you're like, wow, you know, I'm with this person and it's... And then overnight. Overnight. <laughs> overnight you're damn right about that one that was mine last one was overnight same with me yeah but i'll say this 
I've left overnight too. I, yeah. So Same. like, let's, let's, we have to be honest about that. We aren't like these little saints here that just get walked. <laughs> we have that same thing, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. And actually my last one, you know, I walked out like mm -hmm. at night at two o'clock in the morning. Just I left my husband, just rolled out and lived in hotels. Like it was crazy. <laughs> I mean, it was not, it was, but I had to, like, I, I just, I was, but I regret, I regret that. I don't regret mine at all. No it's regrets. It's been bumpy out here as well. With Rahu in the eighth, I don't know. Yeah, you're, that's, that's, you know, but I'm learning stuff about that whole second, eighth house. It's, it's not, we'll, we'll get there next, I guess. Yeah. And then, you know, the main thing is your 12th house. And we've really, like, all 12th house, foreign things, foreign lands, foreign everything, and real estate, and, you know, multinational companies come out of that, foreign things, and just Mercury. So your Mercury is sales, too. You know, yeah. Mercury sales, you're, um, you're ruled by Mercury. So your AK, your, uh, I can't say it, Atmakarka is, is, is uh, Mercury. So that's great. Oh, and the, the, what's the lowest degree is the spouse, Dara Karaka. Moon. And that's that is my, is it my uh, son? Moon. Yeah, your that's son. No, you mean you're the GK, the the one that oh. causes you problems is the sun. Yeah. So what do, what does that say about my future partner? Well, no, your son, your your husband's going to be ruled by the moon, your spouse. Wow. So you're going to like, and actually, so you'll know when you hit a Rahu moon, that could be when you get married, like actually get married. You know what I mean? Or anytime your moon gets activated, that could be a trigger because you're so, which let's be, you know, your moon gets activated every month. So you got a lot of chances. <laughs> I mean, think about it, you know? So my ex has his moon in the first house. What sign? Libra. He's a Libra ascendant. And his Venus is in Scorpio. But you've got Saturn in Libra and Saturn and Moon conjunction in Sinastri, maybe that's a little tough. Tough? What do you say about that, Hadi? Saturn and Moon conjunction in Sinastri? Saturn and Moon? Yeah, that can be a drain. Yeah. The only thing I've noticed where Saturn does well, like I've noticed that Saturn and Venus do well together though, because it can give you like the strength and the stability and like the actual energy to like make it work, right? I've noticed that Venus and Rahu, great. Venus and Rahu on Rahu, K2 on Rahu, that's actually can help. Okay. K2. That has bad in my case, actually. K2 I on Moon, no. K2 on Mars, yes. K2 on Venus, no. Why? Because it drains the fun. K2 is going to drain, the, like suck the problems in the relationship, right? And so, mm -hmm. so when you have K2 sitting on a nice planet like Moon or something like that, I've noticed that, that is, that's a past life karma, karmic relationship. You're here to like bash it out, whether it worked well or not and how it ends, it's probably not going to work, right? It's going to be hot and heavy at the beginning and it's going to feel like your life's over when it's done. But then when you, but if you have like Rahu on Venus, that can be phenomenal, you know, because it can just be like make the passion and make the love and make you guys really care about each other. Especially if like the man's Rahu is on the woman's Venus. That's like the best. And I think Rahu and Rahu, K2 and K2 on each other can actually really balance things out or make it work. It's not going to be easy. Let's be, uh, I mean, that's not going to be, there's no easiness there. Right. That's interesting. But what about, what about seeing the man's Navamsha chart? And like, I always do that. If I see like patterns, you're saying like, I always look yes. at, yeah. Big and see if it looks like your chart. Cause sometimes it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do. 
but you have to be like, because that's the Navamsha chart is also what you kind of turn into, you know, I guess they say. So it's like the chart you grow into in a way. I always, I, to be honest with you, I look at all things for what the spouse is going to be. You know, there's, there's just not one level or one angle. And I don't think this, I don't think it's always going to be the seventh house. I don't, I think it's the ninth too. Hmm. Gotta look at the ninth. And well, if you have an indicator to marry a foreign spouse, you got to look at the 12th. For sure. I'm marrying a foreign spouse. Well, of course you are. You have to be. So your 12th house is going to be activated. And once again, that just shows where Mercury is. Um, Mercury is important. Sun is going to be important. Saturn is going to be important. That's all going to be important. And also the first house can somewhat affect the 12th house, you know, in a relationship access. So it's all spelled out right there. Well, my ruler of the first goes into the ninth in my Navamsha, and my ex's ruler of the first goes in the ninth in his Navamsha. Here's the thing, though, but with Rahu and K2, you never want to say hands down and make predictions when somebody has Rahu and K2 in the first. Because, yeah, you could get married in this Rahu Dasha, but you could easily get divorced too, right? Like it could be a. Because some, most people with, Ra, with K2 in the first get married more than once, especially with K2 on Venus. Now, not all the time, right? Not all the time. But I would never say, oh, this is going to be the most solid marriage and this is hands down going to be the soulmate because you just never know how K2 is going to react. Yeah, I already feel like I was married once. I was in a nine-year relationship. Right. Well, see, and that does matter. Like, that could, that could be it, too. Yeah. yeah. All right, Dipti. Yes. You. You are next. And I just wanted you to know something. Like, your Saturn right, with this Shadbala, 281. You, people would be like, oh my gosh, that's so bad, blah, 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 right? If you look at Donald Trump's Shadbala, it's lower than this. Donald Trump's Saturn is 185. And he made some of the most money in his Saturn Dasha. Or his Saturn, one of his Dashas when he had Saturn there. Just... I want you to know that okay. because everybody looks at Saturn, like those shad balas and say, Oh, it's good. If it's so high, I've seen that work in complete reverse. Mm. So wait, isn't Dipti's Venus retrograde or no, it's no. not. It's my Mercury's retrograde. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, but let even look at that. So sometimes, right, Mercury can be your intellect. You're very smart, right? It can also be the way you communicate. You communicate so well. Look how, how well you speak English. Like, I always said that you speak so, like, you don't have the, I can always understand the Indian accent. I mean, you don't even, you sound almost more Arabic That's in a way, true. you know? So you have that more, and so I think sometimes when you have that all together, Mercury, Venus, and Saturn. That's why I think you don't you speak more languages than just do you speak do you speak more languages? I speak more six, six languages or five languages. How many? Yeah, five. Five, right. So I mean I think that's I, 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 really I, I, smart. I can get my work done. Okay, so something I've been really learning about Hosta and all that Virgo energy. Dipti? Yeah. There's, you need to be like, you're like medicine woman over there. Mm. Seriously, like you have natural healing gifts. Mm. You know, I've been doing that since, since a long time. You never even told me that. That's something I never knew about you. So basically, see, it's, it's, it's more in, about instincts. So I tell people about, okay, you, you've got this problem, go use this herb. It's, it's more like yeah. how you would ask someone to have like a paracetamol. Like a tablet, like a painkiller. Right. So there are so many herbs around that you can use and do good with yourself and others. So that helps. Wow. Have you felt like Jupiter being on four of your natal planets has really been fireworks this year for you? Or? Yes. It's been really good. It's been really good on personal matters, not work wise, because Rahul's still there in the 10th house. I did like great stuff with Rahu in the 10th house, but I also felt great. So I can't really compare which one's good and which one's bad. But Jupiter out there in the 11th house, 
it really did good. I mean, I was shaken up with Saturn in my 12th house with Rahu. You know, you remember it was with Rahu in Libra, Saturn. That was even, even more difficult. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Rahu was there with Saturn. Oh it my, my life hell for those two and a half years. Yeah. And the next two and a half years, it was a bigger mess. Now, because Rahu is in my eighth house, it gave me different kind of trouble that it gave you. Right? So, yeah. I think when Jupiter came in the, 12th, in the 11th house, it kind of made everything seem fine. It, it, you know, I felt as if, I really felt as if I would take, you know, as if everything just flows, you know, all the issues or stress. The moment Saturn moved to Sagittarius and say, actually it started getting better when Jupiter came in the first, in 11th house. But when Saturn moved to the second house, the real, I think, impact began. Yeah. Paul and Dip D, I'm sitting here reading my notes and I look at all those 11th house things, right? Look how many lords go into your 11th house. 11th house is obviously one hell of a house for you, right? Look at this. Yeah. This is insane. So, and when you, when I read my notes, like just my notes I take, 11th house, well, it's aspecting the fifth house, obviously, and it's gains, friends, networks, big inheritance, elder sibling, loss of mother. Yeah. So, and quite honestly, I mean, that's, that was something that happened to you at a young age. Yes. And that was a heavy influence on your life. And that's almost like, you have to think, like that almost had to... That re arranged your whole life in a way too. So you can't always look like that. That 11th house craziness already hit you. So you have to understand, like, it's not always going to be that crazy 11th house energy that I've noticed. Like it's not always, once that karma is almost done, then it can start turning into good things. So when astrologers say, oh, those four planets in that house, that's a, that screws all up the yogas. I don't believe that. I, I don't, I don't necessarily, I can't say that that's even possible. Especially when it's in Hosta and Chitra, no way, not happening. That that would right there make me think you're just some miracle healer that is so good, and that actually not even just healer, somebody that's in the limelight. Saturn and Chitra is somebody that can be famous, incredibly famous. That's like a visionary, right? That's and once again, I know you've been told this, but you have a great chart for real estate. Yeah, okay. Like if you went and got your real estate license, which you know, you'd probably just you do well at it. Okay. And, and K2 in the second house is very fortunate for money matters as well. It can yeah. be, and it also can take it away, right? So- It has to take it away. I mean, I've been doing good for myself, to be really honest. Yeah. I haven't been... Yeah, it's not really good in the direct way, but it has its own ways of making it good, you know, out there. I think also because I have Ketu with Neptune there and I'm into filmmaking, I make films, I have to visualize films. So I think that helps me out there. Yep, for sure. And you know, I, I think K2 there also makes you focus on your family and your family is really important to you, right? I mean, it's that wherever it's gonna be, there's gonna be that family, Yeah. you know? And you really taken care of me around family. Yeah. Last, last year, yeah. Yep. Yes. Well, happened. I don't think like, yeah, it's not always going to be, be bad. I think sometimes when you can have a K2 transit, you could be dealing with a lot of things and you could be dealing with a lot of craziness, but you can actually make good money at that, those points. But you just don't even think about it because you're fo so focused on all the other crap, right? You don't even like, you don't even think about it. Yeah. yeah. So, you're right. Like my K2 Dasha was a breeze. I mean, I, I studied criminal justice. It was great. I loved it. So you just have to think like people just, I think sometimes people just have these assumptions. Yeah. But I promise, I think that's why when you do have K2 in your first house, yeah, you can talk about other things that have happened. And you know, it's not, that's why you can't be right dead on about predictions with K2 and Rahu. Because you just yeah. never know. You know? Like, I got married with K2 in my eighth house on my wedding day. <gasps> right? Like, that's insane. 
Because Rahu was adding another person in your family in the second house. Yeah. But who would have thought to look at the eighth? Like, you would have never thought you could get married in the eighth. Yeah. With K2 wow. in the eighth. How long were you married? Two years. <laughs> but still, like, if you would have seen my chart on my wedding day, you would have been like, you would have never guessed that. Like, you could see it and put all the pieces together. But I would have never been like, oh, yeah, you're going to get married with K2 in the eighth house. <laughs> and what sign was he? Western? No, well, I think he's like, he was a Taurus and he was yeah. Capricorn and he was a Slaysha. Wow. Yeah, all three things that, you know. Grab some water. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I will say this. Another thing with Ra... Can you still hear me, Dipti? Yeah. Okay. I can hear you. Good. So another thing with Rahu and Ardra on the 8th house. Well, I just think personally 8th house for Scorpio doesn't turn out as bad as it does for everybody else. Go get your water. Go ahead. I'm fine. No. No. It, go ahead. Seriously. So I, I just don't think it turns out being like that bad, you know? Because we're so used to it. Yeah. And then, you know, another thing people just, people talk about the eighth house like, oh, it's death, endings, secrets, grace. You know what else it is? Transformation. All these people that I've been doing readings from, they're moving. They've got eighth house activated. So sometimes, you know, like, so for me reading charts with just patterns and not taking all the crazy concoctions into effect, it, I swear, I think that's why I got good at doing, learning all these things. It's not from like reading yogas and reading all this stuff. It's from reading people's charts just over the years, thousands of charts and seeing these patterns. And then I naturally, with putting them with the nakshatras and naturally like kind of connecting the dots. So the eighth house can be just big change. Okay. You, you have to understand that. And then you've got Rahu and Ardra. Rahu yeah. is ruled by Ardra. So look, if you could have the, you have the potential to make big change to the masses. You have to look at it that way too. To create yeah. something new after the storm. Also the Lord of 8th house is sitting in the 11th house. Is that what, why you say that? No, I say because Ardra is ruled by Rahu. Yeah. So each nakshatra has a, a ruler, you know, like, Anurada is Saturn, um, Jaisa is Mercury. So each nakshatra is ruled by a planet. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, so you have to look at the, this is where, where it gets even more insane. So when you look at it from this way, you can see things in charts that wouldn't necessarily, you know, why it wouldn't be that way. So Rahu in Ardra, personally, I don't think that would, I mean, that could be one hell of an inheritance that you get one day right? Or you, you, you invest in something that ends up like, I don't know, who knows, something with technology, you invest in like the right thing with, I, when I see Rahu Ardra, I think like technology and you do that, obviously, you do it differently with the... Yeah, maybe that is why I'm a filmmaker, so I use yeah. camera, I use technology, I use like in editing software, different right. software, different machines, different lights. Right, and you're changing, you change, like you change scenes, you change, like, it's not all bad, right? This is yeah. just your birth chart. So you just have to look how it all pans out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think Rahu and Ardra, if you had Ardra in the eighth house with Mars, different story, that can be a little more chaotic. But it's alone in the eighth house. And I do believe that the eighth house does well for Scorpio because it's the natural sign of Scorpio. Oh, so, yes. You know? I never, I never looked at it that way. Yeah. So it's already okay. Like your eighth house is always in this way, not as bad maybe as everybody else's eighth house, right? Yes, so like right. somebody, like we kind of enjoy our eighth house, I'm sure. That's, that's, such, a, that's such a beautiful way to look at it. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm feeling confident about my eighth house. Yeah, like, you have to. That's how, that's how I started looking at my twelfth house. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the deal. Here's the thing with that. You yeah. can, you can make and change that. You're given this chart. It doesn't mean it's gonna like overtake your life. You can just make better decisions. So if you know it means that, 
you make sure you do those eighth house things and you do those things, not do like drugs, addictions, gamble, right? Because it can be that. So you have to make sure when that eighth house transit gets all ramped up, you don't do, you don't go gamble and you don't put yourself out in the accident. Like just be cautious. As long as you're cautious and you do that, you can probably manifest it in the best way. Right. That's how I look at it. And that's the beauty of astrology. Yes. I think we, we have found the truth of life and the answers through this sacred, you know, science really. Well, another thing like your chart with like with it being all that Shiva energy and transforming, I mean, that's just like, you know, your that eighth house is all about astrology. You're good at astrology and natural at astrology. So, you know, that's all there too. And that makes you extremely, extremely psychic, very intuitive, Rahu in the eighth. And it might freak you out sometimes. You're, I mean, you're about as psychic as they get, 50. Moon in the fifth in Revity, Rahu and Ardra in the eighth house, Jupiter in the twelfth in, in, come on. That's about, that's like, the, in Mars and Scorpio. Wow. I mean, it's like, think about this. Like, I didn't even realize, because I haven't read your chart in so long. But like, if I was reading your chart now, it's a lot different than what I probably would have what I said to you probably three years ago when we're looking at our lives like, oh my God. Right? Yeah. Isn't that crazy though? I mean, in the 11th house, when I see all those planets in there, that is like Venus, Mercury, Sun, first of all, and Saturn together, all in that 11th house. To me, that just looks, when I see those pretty colors, I look at colors too. Sounds weird. This is my own technique. But when I see all that, it's like in the, in the black Saturn. That's like the rags to riches thing. Once you bust your ass and hustle at 11th house out, it's like, whoa, look what you just created and look what you just manifested in the 11th house. That's how I look at that, how it pops yeah. up. So, Saturn you know, likes to be in the 11th house. I have always gone like this in life. Yeah. 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 And you, yeah. you know that Saturn, Saturn loves to be in the 11th house. Yeah. And Saturn is also my Atmakarka. What do you think of a planet at 29 degrees? It's powerful. 29, 39. That's, it's powerful. Yeah. I, that's what I think about it. And so, so you know what I want to do, to be honest. I want to make films and I want to make films where we can, you know what we, how do I put it? So what do you, what do we get out of studying astrology or reading astrology or talking to people about astrology? We feel connected somewhere, you know, and we feel that we are not alone in this. That's not the first thing that I felt. Yep. We have to meet in UID. So, uh, so that's what I want to do. I want to make films that make me feel, feel the same way that you feel in astrology. Yeah. And we have something with to do with astrology and make films. You know what I mean to say? That yeah. can somehow maybe heal people. When they come to watch it, it heals a part of them or an emotion. Well, we can't say all of our tricks, what we, were, what we plan on doing eventually one day and what we have in store. But, because, but I'll say Dipti and I have had this idea which one day it will manifest okay yeah. it, it will and probably sooner than we think now with how this all panned out right i mean there's something that i think could benefit the entire world yeah and i'm not going to go into too many more details but you know i think that when you look at things from different perspectives from internationally Okay, because I'm just going to say from being in America all my life, never going to India, never wanting to go to like Europe or anything, always wanting to go to like India and all those places and just escape there, not understanding why, you know, and looking at the world and after you understand how other countries are, because here in America, we don't learn what you guys, what you do. And now you're... Lola, you're an American in a way. I mean, you know, like you're Americanized, right? And you can probably see just from, you know, how it is in Serbia to how it is here. It's like we get taught one way. We don't learn all of these languages. We don't learn, like the Indian education system 
versus ours is like blows. I mean, everybody that comes from India is an engineer or doctor or architect. I mean, there's no like, you know, they, you guys go have school, you speak a hundred languages. I mean, it's just insane. Right. And then you come here, it's like, yeah, you can learn Spanish if you'd like, <laughs> you know, if you, you don't have to, but you can, it's optional. Right. It's not. And like, I wish I learned another language. I wish I, and it's just, everything's valued so differently. Like we're here in this like shell. And yeah. when I started globally looking at like the scale here, when I look like, okay, this doesn't make sense. Why are we, you know, something's off here. And then when you see like some of the other countries and you see how the cultures is, how they are and how much happier people are and how much, you know, you're just like, what's going on here in this place? Like, yeah, we get divorced easily, yeah. and, but we have a lot of freedom. Woohoo. But like, how much freedom do you need to, I mean, we're selfish as shit. Let's be honest. I am. And I, I know I am, but not when it comes to that, you know, like I just, I know my emotions. I'm selfish too, <laughs> but I do feel like there is a way that you can help people by this. Like anytime Dipti and I were talking to each other, it was a therapy session all day. Why? Because we were on the same page. We were on the same thought process. It wasn't like I was talking to a bunch of people that didn't give two flying about astrology, right? I mean, because most people don't. So if you find somebody that you have this with that's in another country or that's in, that's in another culture than you, it really does change your perspective from both ways. Because it's healed me in a way. I think Heidi, even you are a healer with Moon and Refti and Venus and Hasta. For sure. Kind of, speaking to you kind of healed me around that time. That's what I think I needed the most. Yeah. yeah. Because sometimes you just need to be able to talk to somebody that's not going to judge you. And